Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the changes that they've made to solutions in CRM 2016. So, you know, if you think about solutions, they have they can be sometimes an area of frustration for people because when you bring an entity um, into a solution, you bring everything. You bring all the fields, the forms, the relationships, business rules, everything comes in for that particular entity. And particularly if you have a bunch of unmanaged solutions that are all referencing the same entities, now you can run into conflicts and you're updating things that you're not intending to update in other scenarios. So one of the big changes that they've made with CRM 2016 now is we can pick and choose. When we bring information into a solution, we bring the entity and we can define what specific things all the way down to a form and individual feel element. And the nice thing about that is not only do you have a little bit of more control when you're creating the solution and building the solution, but now this opens up some new uh, some new items around solutions as well as the ability to be able to bring in like patches and to actually be able to add specific functionality to that solution and then just introduce that functionality as kind of an add on scenario. So they brought in this concept of being able to clone patches and clone solutions that actually include all these individual patches. So you you have kind of minor versions and versions necessarily that you can create specifically around these solutions. So today we want to talk just a little bit about the you know the concept of the subcomponents and we'll talk just a little bit about the, the patching and we'll probably expand on that in another video. But I at least wanted to kind of show you this information to start. So let's go ahead and just show you kind of how it works. So I've hopped back into my kind of CRM environment and I already have a solution that we've created here called tip of the day. And we're going to go ahead and open up the tip of the day solution. And so, you know, conceptually, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference when you open solutions. They don't look all that different when you bring them in there. Um, but when you start bringing elements into the solutions, things are a little bit different. So we'll go ahead and just click on entities like we normally would for a solution. And we'll go ahead and click on add existing. And we'll bring a couple different items in here just so you can kind of see how this concept works. So we'll go ahead and we'll bring in the account entity and then we'll also bring in the contact entity. So now what happens is when you first kind of bring these entities into the application, it's going to look at every single entity that you have in the solution and it's going to open up kind of a window. And so here's where now you kind of pick what they're referring to in some cases as subcomponents or entity assets for each entity that you're bringing in. Now you can see by default that all of the entity metadata is already included in this solution. So the metadata references are going to be there. However, now you have the capabilities for each individual item to kind of pick and choose. Now what's important to note is if it's a system entity, these assets or these subcomponents don't actually get added by default. So if you just click on next here, it'll move on to the next entity and nothing will be added. If you want to include every single piece of this particular item based upon what it is that you're doing, you can check add all assets here and then this will in essence select everything, all the forms, all the views, all the charts, everything will get included for this particular entity as you're moving forward. And then if you have multiple entities, now when you just click next, now it'll go into the next one and allow you to kind of decide what you want to do from here. So now maybe in this particular situation, I just want to bring in a couple of fields or I just want to bring in a form or a couple of views. This is where now I would have the capability to say, OK, I just want to bring in the contact view. I just want to bring in the informational view for Mobile Express. I want to go over to views. I'm going to bring in the active contacts view and I'm going to bring in the my active contacts. And then maybe I'm going to bring in from a field standpoint Maybe I've got a few fields that I want to bring in. Um, maybe there's some business rules that I want to create. You know, whatever those individual situations are, you can kind of define. And now you'll also see in here that there's dashboards. Those dashboards really reflect the interactive service hub functionality that have personalized dashboards for entities. And we'll talk a little bit about that in another video as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and we'll just kind of leave this as it is. So I'll go ahead and hit finish. Now, the other thing that you'll notice once this kind of finishes loading into the area is I am actually not going to get prompted to add missing components. And so one of the other changes that they've made with CRM 2016, primarily on solutions, is if you're adding system entities and system components and they have references to other out of the box functionality, so other system entities, they've actually gotten rid of that required missing component situation. So you're not going to see that nearly as much as you would have 
would have in the past, particularly if you're referencing system components. Now, if it's you know referencing a custom entity or, or something like that, then by all means, you'll still see that, that functionality when you're bringing it in, but they've gotten kind of rid of that as, as part of the initial process as far as going in. So now if I come in here and I expand entities, I'll see my account entity, click on forms, all my forms, all that information is there, just like I would have had in any other situation. Same with views. If I click on views, I'll see all the individualized scenarios. If I go to contact, however, and I click on forms, I will just see the two forms that I elected to bring into this situation. Um, because I go, if I go to views, I'll just see the, just the views that I've selected. And because I didn't actually add any fields, I won't see any fields when I come in here. Now I can add custom fields to this and, and work with the information from here. So if I'm just trying to add customized situations, I would have that functionality. So that if I ever decide, you know what, I probably needed one or two fields within that situation, or I need all, all, all the fields within that situation. Now you do have the capabilities on the entity itself, you'll see a scenario here where you can click on add subcomponents. And so now what this will allow me to do is it'll open up the contact entity, bring up that exact same kind of window area that I was looking at before and allow me to add those subcomponents directly into it. So now I could come into here and say, okay, on my fields, let's go ahead and add all my fields into it. And then move on from there. Now, probably wouldn't normally add all the fields because the, you know, obviously the situation behind this is giving us the capabilities to make more targeted solutions on just the specific components and items that we want. But, you know, for illustration purposes, it at least gives us the, the capabilities to kind of show that as we're going through. Now, it's a little different when you're using a custom entity. So when you go ahead and you create a custom entity, so if I go ahead and click on new here and, and just create kind of a custom entity, it will actually bring kind of everything in by default. So if I go in here, we'll just call this um, sample and samples. And we'll go ahead and just kind of click a couple of buttons here and save and close. Once this entity is created, now when it goes in and we, we open it up, you'll notice that everything will kind of be brought in by default. All the forms, all the fields, all of that. And that's just default behavior for custom entities. So whereas system entities, you'll have to kind of pick what you want and you can always add more later. Custom entities are going to pretty much have everything brought into it by default um, when you're working through it. So you can see here, there's all my informational forms and items. Now, the other thing, like I said, and we'll get into this in a little bit more detail in another video, is this whole concept of, of patching. And so now you have the capabilities to actually create kind of minor patch versions for your solutions and just bring in specific content associated with that, which now gives you the capabilities to just kind of update individual stuff. And so you'll notice now that it tells me that it's coming off of a base solution, and then I can pick kind of the version number for the minor version that I want to use on this. So when I click save, now it's going to go ahead and it's going to bring in kind of this patched version for the item that I'm working with. And when I open up this patched version, now I would have the capabilities to just introduce, you know, kind of subset behaviors of items that I want to work with. So you'll see that it's a completely clean solution in the fact that there isn't information in there because it's all stored in the main part of the solution. So this is just kind of additional functionality or, or items that I may want to bring in. So I could create a new entity into this if I wanted to, and then roll that information in from there. And what's nice is you also would then have the capabilities. There's a ways to apply the upgrade. Once you have patches associated with it, there's the ability to clone solutions with all the patches. These are all things that we can talk a little bit about in other videos as we're moving forward. So that's kind of some of your solution changes for CRM 2016. I hope you enjoyed it. I've been very excited to show you this once I first saw it. It's really neat. And I think if you have an opportunity to play around with it a little bit more, you're going to see lots of cool stuff and, and just ways to kind of roll things out that, that are going to make these very exciting moving forward. So I hope you enjoyed kind of your first look into the new solution changes for CRM 2016. And again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek, and I just want to say take care, thanks, and have a good one, everybody.